You are listening to How to Teach Piano, a weekly bilingual podcast inspiring pianists and piano teachers to expand their horizons while pursuing excellence in their craft. Welcome to the show. I'm Eduardo Rosco, a fellow pianist and piano teacher with almost 30 years of experience in the field. Every week you will find me discussing past and current trends in piano pedagogy, piano technique and performance preparation strategies. I will also be sitting down with fellow musicians to discuss their teaching process and how to make an impact as a teacher and a musician. Welcome to the show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about trial piano lessons. As teachers, we are used to receiving new calls or text messages from prospective students, and the topic of trial lessons is somewhat controversial. This question is not exactly about how to teach piano, but it's a question about how to run your business as a professional piano teacher, and it is something that you really have to consider if you are a new teacher or if you are starting a new piano studio. There are a few points we have to consider before talking about this subject. A trial lesson can offer you several benefits. You need to think about a trial lesson as your sales pitch. You have to remember that you are running a business and you can show your potential clients why they should buy your product or your service. You also have to understand that your clients, in this case, your students or their parents, are looking for a service provider, but they are the ones who need to understand the value that they will receive from you and why they will also be evaluated as potential clients. You are not required to accept every student that comes to you. So let's begin with the reasons as to why prospective students or their parents would ask you for a trial piano lesson. There are several reasons for this. You have to assume that prospective students or their parents are interested in taking lessons, but they are also shopping around for a good teacher or a cheap teacher or a teacher who lives near their home or a music academy or perhaps even a pre-college program at the university or a music conservatory. You may be an excellent teacher, but your tuition might be a bit too expensive for some people, or perhaps your studio is a little too far from their homes. When a student finds a teacher that meets their needs, they might be willing to travel wherever you are in the city. So don't be disappointed if you hear from a student who lives on the other part of town and you think they could quit lessons anytime because the distance is too far from them. You might be surprised to discover how many people prefer quality over convenience. Along the same lines, some students are willing to pay more for a teacher they felt a personal connection with rather than paying a cheaper fee with a famous teacher who lives in their street or in their neighborhood. Sometimes prospective students are looking for a consult and are confused about what it means to study music or an instrument. Parents might want to know if their children have any kind of talent or any kind of musical aptitudes, and they just want your honest evaluation. You need to be able to express yourself freely when meeting and evaluating a student. After all, people came to you because you are the professional. You have to be able to tell the family or to the students, if they are adults or teenagers or young adults, when you don't feel your teaching style is a good fit for them, or when you feel they are not a good fit for you. You might have certain expectations in your own teaching style, but the students or their families also come with expectations that do not fit your teaching criteria and curriculum. So you have to let them know about that. I really believe the most important reason why prospective students ask for a trial lesson is because they want to feel a personal connection with you, with a potential teacher. If you are an independent piano teacher like I am, you know that the majority of the students in your studio will consist of pre-college students. I think it's very important for children and teenagers to really feel a personal connection 
with their teacher. College students are a little different because they are working towards a degree and there are certain requirements that they have to fulfill. They already have their own personalities, their own expectations about their music career, and perhaps they chose their teacher or they were assigned to a teacher when they came to college. So it's a different situation. I often receive shy students who sometimes hide behind their parents when they come to my studio for the first time. I actually see this as an opportunity to establish a stronger connection with that student because I want to believe that the student has a real interest in music or in piano lessons. I really believe it is our job to give this type of students the possibility of exploring music with a teacher that they can feel comfortable with. Now let's talk about your side of the story. Why should you offer a trial piano lesson? We have to be honest, trial lessons are not only for the students. Trial lessons are always a great idea for you. You need to know whether you want to work with certain students and their families, or maybe you are not even interested. On several occasions, I felt great connection with students, but I sensed resistance or a negative response or a negative energy from the family based on how they contacted me or based on the way that they talked to me, maybe in the type of questions they had about my studio policies or maybe my own teaching style. I have chosen sometimes to let students go because I did not want to go through the hassle of dealing with such negative families. On the other hand, I have met wonderful families only to discover that their children were not really showing any interest in piano lessons. Sometimes parents just want to have their kids in music lessons as an after-school activity, but the kids themselves might not really have any interest in being there with you, and some of them will actually express that to you with their behavior. So you have to think about that. Do you really want to have a lesson with a student that has no interest in being in the same room with you? I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had students like this, and after some time, I have seen students develop a real interest in music or in the piano itself. You will always find exceptions. It is only a matter of deciding whether you are willing to deal with a situation for a while with the expectation that the student or the family will change their initial negative attitude. You really have to consider how long you are willing to deal with this situation. In my early years as a piano teacher, I was willing to accept all the students and all kinds of students simply because I was trying to make a decent income. I was interested in the money. After I became more established as a professional piano teacher, I began to define my criteria for accepting new students. So you might also be in this situation where you cannot afford the luxury of letting a potential student go because you are in the process of building your own studio. Whenever you can afford not accepting prospective students, then you will be able to give reasons as to why you are not willing to work with a student. When I don't really feel comfortable accepting a new student, for whatever reason, I usually say that I have a full schedule at the moment, but I will gladly add them to my waiting list. I mean, after all, nobody wants to tell a student or their parents that you don't want to work with them because you don't like them or because you didn't feel comfortable with them. If a family is shopping around for a teacher, they will eventually go to another teacher, so you don't have to worry about that. I will always tell these type of students that I would gladly recommend them other teachers since I cannot guarantee when I will have open slots in my schedule. If you want to go beyond a trial lesson, you can also consider offering a trial month or a period, either at your usual rate or you can even offer a discounted rate for your trial period. Some parents are actually hesitant to commit to an entire semester or a year of lessons. So this is an opportunity for them 
to have a better feel for piano lessons or for your teaching style or your personality. Just be warned about something because this situation could create major chaos in your schedule since a student might take you up on that trial lesson or a trial month or a period and then they might decide to stop lessons with you. You could end up with an open slot in your schedule which could have been offered to another student. If you are against offering trial lessons, consider at least offering a meet and greet session. You can chat, you can talk about the method books you use or you would like to use with the student. You can allow the students to see where they will be taking their lessons every week. You can also allow the parents to feel comfortable bringing their kids to your studio. Many teachers prefer to limit these type of sessions to 10, 15 or 20 minutes since this will be a session just to talk and greet each other. Another option you can offer is for the student and their families to sit and watch you teach one of your regular students. If you choose this option, just make sure to ask your regular students for permission to be observed since some people actually feel very uncomfortable when they have audience during their lessons. Okay, I have to pause and tell you about a special type of students. And I'm talking about hyperactive students. Yes, it is not a myth. They actually exist and we all go through this. And I'm really sorry to say this, but you will not be an exception. I mean, sometimes you find a really nice child with a really nice family and you discover that the child cannot sit still for more than 5-10 seconds. It happens. If you feel you cannot work with this type of a student or you don't want to work with this type of student, you need to let the family know that it might be better to wait a few months or even a year before they think about starting lessons. You might even want to recommend them an introductory music class for young children, but they could wait a bit longer for piano lessons. You want to be honest with the family. Do not be afraid of being honest with the parents. Sometimes parents really insist that they want their kid to start an instrument. I mean, really, if you don't feel comfortable, by all means, you can recommend them to another teacher who perhaps might have a different teaching approach for this type of students. The most important thing here to remember is that you are a business owner. You want to make money, and a trial lesson creates the perfect setting for the sales pitch. You should not be ashamed of wanting to make a sale. So put your salesperson hat on and sell your product or your service. Okay, let's talk about the most controversial question when it comes to trial lessons. Should you charge for it? Let me clarify something. A trial lesson does not mean a free lesson. Many teachers believe that when a prospective student asks you for a trial lesson is because they want to get a free lesson with you. I think there is a confusion with the term of trial lesson. But you have to remember, this is your work, this is your time, so you should charge for it. You should not feel guilty to ask for compensation for your time. I think there is a profound personal element in a piano lesson but this is also a business. At the end of a trial lesson, the student might not want to sign up with you, but at least you could make some extra income. Some teachers charge the regular fee and others prefer a reduced fee. You always have the option to reduce your rate, but also the lesson time. You do not have to offer the same time as a regular piano lesson. Some teachers see free trial lessons as good marketing. After all, you are offering free value and you are trusting that your potential clients will actually sign up with you. 
it is a valid argument and you should really consider it if you are trying to bring more students to your studio. You can even post ads on social networks and advertise your free trial lessons. Nowadays, it's very common to advertise on Facebook or on Instagram, or you might even want to hire Google Ads. Let me mention a downside to free trial lessons or meet and greet sessions. I think the word free sometimes makes people feel a little entitled. After scheduling a trial lesson, some people feel like if they have the time, they will show up. And if they don't, they can reschedule whenever they want since you are offering a free service. So if you are offering free services, do not be surprised if you get stood up or if you get a call or a text saying that they forgot or something came up and they can contact you whenever they want. I think many of us fall victim to multiple no-shows and reschedules but this is because we allow it. This is why requiring a minimal fee can also help you weed out people who do not have a serious interest in taking lessons from you. If a prospective student chooses to continue with you, they can prorate the rest of the month. You just have to make sure to include this in your studio policy. So let's see how you can include a trial piano lesson in your studio policy. You can really make your life easier if you include your trial lesson in your studio policy. As you know, your studio policy gives prospective and regular students clear guidelines about your expectations. Most of us include in our studio policies a detailed section about how much we are going to charge and how we are going to charge them. Some teachers have different fees and payment plans, such as charging lesson by lesson, a monthly fee, a specific period, and even a year in advance. So it makes sense that we should include the cost of your trial lesson in your policy. As I mentioned before, you may choose to charge your regular or discounted rate, but make it clear in your studio policy. Indicate whether the trial lesson requires an additional fee or if it is included or prorated in their tuition. You might want to establish a little paragraph in your studio policy indicating how you are going to work with a trial lesson. For example, I used to have this little paragraph in my old policy. I would say, and feel free to use this in your own studio policy, I used to say, for example, uh, a one-time $10 or $15 introductory lesson of 30 minutes is offered to new students and must be paid at the time of lesson. During this meeting, I will be evaluating different abilities and all policies will be reviewed. I will offer my professional evaluation and will recommend method books, materials, and a plan of study. It is required for parents of younger students to be present during the entire lesson. I used to have this little paragraph in my old policy. After a few years, I really learned the importance of making a detailed studio policy. Now, how many trial lessons are you going to offer? Well, write it in your policy. Most teachers agree that one trial lesson, either free or paid, is actually enough. If the student wants more than one, then it is up to you to decide if you want to take on that student knowing that they could only be testing the waters for a few weeks. This is why it is important to have a studio policy where you define what a trial lesson is. Some teachers actually require their students to sign up for an entire semester or for the entire academic year. If you specify this in your studio policy, your prospective students will have more information before making their final decision. Some students are actually not interested 
in a trial lesson. They just want to come to you and start their lessons right away. Perhaps you already have enough time chatting on the phone and you feel comfortable with your evaluation. You could go ahead and start lessons immediately, but at least you could protect yourself against any possible situation that may arise with a prospective student if you require a trial lesson before fully accepting a student. Okay, so we already talked about the different reasons why you should offer a trial lesson, why students would ask you for a trial lesson, and we were just talking about how you should include trial lessons in your studio policy. Now, let's come to the most important part. What are you going to do during the actual trial lesson? If you don't know what to do during the actual trial lesson, I'm just going to say this. Teach the student how to play piano. This is your chance not only to evaluate the student, but it's also your chance to show off as a teacher. This is your opportunity to establish yourself as the authority that you are. These people came to you, so you have to show them what you can do in one single lesson. Just remember one thing. Students want to play piano. They want to make music. They want to make sound. So teach them that. Personally, I would not waste time teaching concepts during a trial lesson. I teach sound and music from the very beginning. And you can also show them how they can start playing piano and making music immediately. They will have plenty of time to learn about concepts in future lessons. It can be a piece that is played with a single finger. You can easily teach the piece by rote. Even one single piece can show you a lot about what this student can or cannot hear and do. You can also evaluate the student's ear based on their ability to imitate melodic and rhythmic patterns or single notes or single pitches at the piano or away from the piano. For example, you can have them identify high sounds or low sounds. You might be surprised what you discover with this type of evaluation. Now, young children are usually very curious about the instrument itself. They want to know how it works, what's inside the piano, what the pedals are for, and so on. You might want to have a brief explanation or demonstration about how the instrument works. After this evaluation, you can design your future lesson plans. So this is your opportunity to show the structure of a regular lesson. Show the students what behaviors will be allowed in your studio during lessons. Perhaps you have a routine you want your students to follow from the very beginning until the very end of the lesson. Show it to them. If you are a Suzuki teacher, Perhaps you are used to starting and ending a lesson with a bow. That is very common during Suzuki lessons. I have seen very chaotic lessons in other teachers' studios because they never show the students what was and was not accepted during lesson time. A trial lesson gives you the opportunity to set the rules from the very beginning. So do not waste this opportunity. Okay, trial lessons are not only for beginner students. You might have a prospective transfer student who is asking for a trial lesson. You need to use this time to assess the student's strengths and weaknesses. You also need to evaluate if you are able to help the student to become a better pianist. Some teachers only accept students who can play at a certain level you might only work with beginners or elementary level, advanced students or adults, etc. If the student is not within the level you are comfortable working with, you can always refer them to a colleague. Now, what if you have multiple family members who want to participate in the trial lesson that you are going to offer? Well, you can choose to give the same time to each family member. However, you could give more time to the first person, then give less time 
for each additional student since they already washed your work. With the next student, just go straight to the point and get to work. At the end of a trial lesson, always invite the student and their families to think about it before making their final decision. You do not need an answer on the spot. This also gives you a way out in case you are the one who decides in the next few days that you don't want to work with this family. I'm going to give you one final recommendation. It is very important to use a trial lesson as an introduction to the concept of practicing. Explain what it means and what you expect from them. Please do not be afraid to ask prospective students and their parents directly to their faces if they are actually willing to commit to a practice routine. You can design the practice routine later on, but it's important that they understand what you are expecting in terms of practicing. Okay, before we end this episode, I'm just going to mention a few takeaways. Okay, so we said, you are a business owner. Establish your policies as a business owner and behave like a business owner. Now, students are shopping for a service provider. So remember, you are also shopping for certain types of clients. This goes both ways. Make sure to define your trial piano lessons and include them in your studio policy. How long will the lesson be? How much you are going to charge? Is it going to be free? Is it going to be at the regular rate or at a reduced rate? Are you going to offer a trial lesson or are you going to offer a trial period? All these questions should be included in your studio policy. Before the actual lesson, make sure to create a lesson plan based on the student's ages and musical background. I'm assuming you already have an initial phone call or an email or a text message. So make sure to define a clear lesson plan. Be prepared with your materials. Make sure you have printed copies of your studio policy. You need to have information and other registration forms, which you might use. Make sure to have your music scores ready for at least one or two pieces you might want to teach during the initial trial lesson. If you are going to give any kind of worksheet to the student at the end of the lesson, make sure that you have it prepared. Remember to ignite the spark in your potential new clients by making them play music from the very beginning. Most importantly, show off. Show off. Show what you can do. Show off and sell your product or your service. Evaluate the students and don't be afraid to refer them to another teacher if you felt you were not a good fit working together. Thank you for listening to this episode. How to Teach Piano broadcasts on Mondays. How to Teach Piano is committed to giving our listeners the most up-to-date and valuable information for teachers and pianists alike. Like what you hear? Donate to our Patreon by following the link in this episode's description. Don't forget to follow us on our social networks.